In today's video, we'll walk through creating a scene with a warped torus with patterns offset on its surface. We'll be using RayTK version 0.28, so make sure you're using at least that version. Check the video description for a download link. Start by dropping the toolkit tonks into your project. Open the palette using the Alt-R shortcut and create a Raymarch Render 3D. I'm going to set the resolution here so that it fits in the side panel, but feel free to use whichever resolution you want. With the render selected, use the Alt-Shift-R shortcut to open the RayTK Editor Tools menu. Choose Add Look At Camera. And then on the camera, set the FOV angle to 80, and then keep the position at 005. Then select the renderer again, open the Editor Tools menu again, and choose Add Point Light. And for the light, we're going to set the position to negative 8, 8, and 10. Next, we'll set up our SDF. Create a torus SDF and connect it to the first input on the renderer. Then set the axis to Z and we're gonna increase the radius to one and the thickness to 0.5. Next, we'll offset the surface of the torus with a pattern. Create a round operator and insert that between the torus SDF and the renderer. The round operator offsets the surface, either pushing it out or pulling it in. Create a truche pattern and connect that to the second input on the round. The result is a mess, and that's for a few different reasons. First is that it's applying way too much of an offset, leading to rendering glitches. So we need to scale down those values. With the truche pattern selected, open the Editor Tools menu and choose Rescale Field and make sure to use rescale field and not rescale as vector, since we're just dealing with a field that produces a single offset value and not a vector. So we're gonna insert that between the pattern and the round, and then decrease the multiply down to something like 0 0.1. The next issue is that the transition between the high parts and the low parts is too steep. On the true shape pattern, I'm going to increase the blending up to 0.1, and that's going to smooth out those transitions. Try adjusting the curve to go from a straight diagonal line pattern to these kind of curved patterns all the way up to kind of a rounded grid. So between that and the thickness setting, which controls the thickness of the, those lines, and the blending, you can get a whole bunch of different looks. But I'm going to go here with uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then say 1.5. The next issue is that this pattern doesn't fit properly onto the torus. This is one of the most common questions that I get about RayTK from the community. So if you try adjusting the translate settings on the pattern here, you'll see that it's basically just projecting that pattern along the XY plane. And that's the default behavior for pattern operators when you use them in a 3D context. To change the shape of the pattern, we have two options. First, we could use transform filters to reshape it so that it fits more closely. That approach can be more difficult, but it can be used for all different types of surfaces. 
The alternative, which we're going to use here, is to use surface-specific UV coordinates to drive the pattern. This option is only available for certain SDFs and doesn't necessarily account for transforms that are applied to the surface between where it's initially defined and where you're using it. First thing that we need to do is enable UV coordinates on the SDF. On the Taurus SDF, I'm going to change the UV mode to Taurus. So when the renderer asks the Taurus SDF for the closest surface to a point in space, it will do its regular calculations to find the distance, but then it will also calculate UV coordinates based on the settings of the Taurus and where the renderer is asking about, and attach that to its response. Check out the textures and UVs tutorial for more information about how to work with UVs. The next thing we need to do is make the pattern use these UV coordinates. Select the round operator and open the editor tools again and look at the reference variable submenu. So this shows us a list of all the variables that this round operator makes available to its second input. And what we want here is under the SDF surface, there's this primary UV. So we're going to click that, and that will create a variable reference here. And this is now a field that produces those UV coordinates as a vector. I'll connect the variable reference to the true shape pattern's first input, the coordinate field input. This looks slightly better, but the scale of the pattern is much too large. There are a few options for fixing this. First, try decreasing the size parameter on the pattern. Now note that for many settings, you'll get this discontinuity at the bottom here, and that's where the U coordinate goes from 0 to 1, it crosses that boundary there. And we need to make sure that our pattern smoothly repeats across that boundary. For Truchet pattern, it tiles cleanly at whole number coordinates. So by choosing a size that's 1 divided by a whole number, it will repeat properly. So if we go with 0.25, that will work, or 0.125, or any other uh, whole number division like that. So if we have the setting set to 0.25, that's effectively the same thing as having that U coordinate and the V coordinate go from 0 to 4 instead of 0 to 1. So that's why we get this kind of four steps of the pattern around the ring there. But it would be good to have separate control over the axes, so let's set that size back to 0 0.5. Now you may think that you could use a scale operator or another type of transform filter here after the pattern. So create a scale and insert that between the pattern and the rescale field here. But you'll notice that this doesn't do anything. And that's because we've connected a field to the coordinate input of the pattern, which means that it's totally ignoring the regular spatial coordinates and just using the coordinates that it gets from this input. So delete that scale operator and reconnect that rescale field. Instead, we want to modify the vectors that are coming out of this variable reference before they're passed to the pattern. There are ways that we can use transform filters on field values like this, but there's a simpler option that we can use. Select the variable reference and open the editor tools, and choose rescale field. And then we're going to connect that to the pattern. So now we can change the scaling of those coordinates for each of the axes separately. So on the rescale field and the output high, I'm going to increase the x part to around, say, 8, and then the y to around 4. And as long as you stick with whole numbers there, it should tile correctly. On the pattern, try adjusting the translate, and that's going to shift the pattern 
So the X part here is going kind of around that center axis, and the Y part is going around the surface of the ring. Later on, we'll add some animation to those parameters. Now that we've set up our surface, we'll add some distortion to make things more interesting. We'll start with twist. Rather than using a twist operator, which only twists consistently in one direction, we'll use a rotate with a field. Create a rotate operator and insert that between the round and the renderer. And change the rotate mode to axis. So this is just going to do rotation around a single axis, in this case the Y. Create a wave field and connect that to the second input, the rotate field input on the rotate operator. And set the axis there to Y. And since we're dealing with rotation and angles, we're going to need larger values. So we'll increase the amplitude here to around 60. Then we can increase the period to, say, 4 to stretch out the wave there. Try adjusting the phase parameter here to shift that twist wave up and down along the y-axis and we'll add some animation to that later on. Next, we're going to be adding some four-dimensional rotation. This is a new feature added in version 0.28 of the toolkit. Create a rotate 4D operator and insert that between the rotate and the renderer. Set the plane to ZW, and then try increasing this rotate setting. This operator remaps space into four dimensions using what's called inverse stereographic projection. Then it applies rotation along two of the axes, in this case Z and W, and then it maps those 4D coordinates back into 3D space using stereographic projection. The result is a bit hard to describe, so it's helpful just to experiment with it and see what it does, but it sort of turns things inside out. One of the challenges with 4D rotation is that it can cause surfaces to reach out and intersect with the camera blocking the view. So if you switch the plane to XW and try the rotation there, you'll get some points where that surface is blocking the camera view and everything goes dark. So switching back to the ZW axis there, it helps to avoid that problem. And that's because the camera is straight in front of the shape on the Z axis. So rotating on ZW is less likely to cause issues where it intersects the camera. But that can be different for different types of surfaces. So it's good to just experiment and find safe ranges for those values. I'm going to go with a rotation here of around 70 and try adjusting the phase on the wave field that's driving the rotation before the 4D rotation, and you'll get some interesting motion there. Next, we'll set up our material. Create a modular mat and insert that between the rotate 4D and the renderer. Then with the modular mat selected, open the editor tools and under add diffuse, choose Orin Nair. Then increase the roughness and albedo both to one. And then pick a color. I'm gonna go with a slight gold tint. So I'm gonna go 1.9 and 0.8. And that gives us some standard diffuse shading on the surface. Next, create an iridescence contrib and connect that to the next input on the modular material. This shading element uses the surface angle relative to the view angle to produce rainbow patterns. 
Try adjusting the levels of the iridescence contrib and the diffuse to change the balance of those two types of shading. Note that the iridescence contrib totally ignores the light position since it's only based on the surface normal and not on any kind of light-based shading. Next, we'll add some animation to get things moving. We'll start with our surface pattern. Select the true shape pattern and open the editor tools menu. Then under animate with speed, I'm going to choose translate Y. Now you could animate both parts of that, but since the first one just kind of spins the pattern around that center axis, it's not as interesting. So I'm just going to be doing the Y part. Then adjust the speed multiplier to say around 0.2 to slow that motion down. Next we'll animate the twisting. So on the wave field, select that, open the editor tools, and under animate speed, choose phase. Then adjust the speed on that down to say 0.1, slow things down a bit. Now you may notice that in some places there's a little bit of noise around some of the edges there in the pattern there. So you can see a little bit of it in there around some of those edges there. And there are a few different strategies for cleaning that up, but what we're gonna go with here is smoothing out those surface normals since they're changing a bit rapidly in some places. So on the renderer, go to the settings page and then switch on enable normal smoothing. And then we're gonna bump that up just a little bit to around 0.02 and that will smooth out some of those rough parts without totally blowing out the surface pattern. So to recap, we are starting with a torus SDF and we're then offsetting that using a round operator. And to drive that round operator, we're using a true shape pattern and we're using the UV coordinates provided by the Taurus SDF with this UV mode setting, accessing those the variable reference pointing to that round operator, then rescaling them so that we can change the scale of our pattern there, and then we are rescaling the values that come out of that pattern to adjust how much it's offsetting the surface. Then we're using rotation with a wave along the y-axis to create some twisting. And then we're applying 4D rotation along the ZW plane. And finally, we are using a modular material here with diffuse shading and then also some of this iridescence. Thanks for watching. Check out my Patreon for access to scene files, exclusive tutorials, and more. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe.